have to have a bit of a flannel wash yes, to yes. see if we we'll Look, too much detail. Too much detail. Do you think you know the answer? <laughs> I can't remember the question. <laughs> no, it's not December. I'm not listening to Christmas music. Which is what he used to do. I'm not watching Christmas films. He's very, very nice. Okay. Sorry. Look. Anson Mount. Uh, I'm not going to have agree with Bing that. Crosby jingling his bells in October. Well. My favourite of all the multiple choice answers, Mickey John. <laughs> I'm not sure if he was my favourite captain. No, you, we know your favourite is Anson Mount. Well, he's a very recent captain. It has become detached. It has become from detached. From the large head. From the large head. The large head of the teddy. Oh, it's the ghost head. If you get on the Orient <laughs> Express in Istanbul and you travel to the end of the line, where would you get right. on? I'm too busy thinking about the possibilities. <laughs> of a flower wash on a train. <laughs> Nice one. Nice one, Welcome, everybody, to the Bakery Bears video show featuring the start of our seasonal programming. Wow. Can you believe That's it? That's exciting, isn't it? Do you know what? I can't believe we're at this point. I can. Can you? Yeah. Right. How many episodes of My Favourite Blanket? Well, that is filled? true. How many episodes of The Rise and Fall of the Monastery? That is filled? also true. I, I know, can but totally it always, believe it. It always creeps upon me, you know, the, the thought of it being December soon, and it is really. There was no isn't creeping. It? No creeping. <laughs> because look. Anyone who knows us will know we love Christmas time. We do. Oh, yes. I mean, I can't believe it. It's like two weeks till December ish. Uh, yeah, that's all yes. well, it is. I know. Yeah, pretty and much. Then, yeah. Boom! The excitement really then hits, doesn't it? And do you know what? As I've got older, I've come to the conclusion that you should embrace it fully. Don't think, no, 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 it's not December. I'm not listening to Christmas music. Which is what he used to do. I'm not watching Christmas films. Just enjoy life. We've been watching everything and listening to everything. Enjoy life, you know. If you want, if you want to do it, do it. If you want to put some decorations up, go do it. But maybe not in July. Well, it's Christmas in July. Oh, look, I don't you know. You said the wrong month. I know, OK. Maybe not in April. August. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we didn't say the same word. No, Christmas definitely in not, April. Definitely not April, I would say, no. It's a whole new thing. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, it is important, but personally I think it's important to at least keep it close to the season. You know, I... Yes, I mean, I, yes, I, I would agree with that. I'm not going to have agree with Bing that. Crosby jingling his bells in October. Well, I've got no, no answer to that, really. <laughs> So yes, my goodness, this is going to be quite the show. Yes. Because once a year, we like to battle it out for the knit or forfeit crown. We do. Two rounds, ten questions, perfect for you and someone who maybe doesn't like knitting because we've got five on knitting and we've got five general Are knowledge. there such people out there? I know, I know. Well, there are because people tell us because they watch with their partners who <laughs> love either Rise and Fall of the Monasteries or... Can't imagine it personally, but there we go. <laughs> there's also quite a lot... Each to their own. There's a lot of people who watch who don't knit but love the show anyway. Yeah, we yeah. regularly have messages, yeah, which is just marvellous. We do, we do. Yeah. It's the whole reason why we call ourselves... Well, you told us back in 2018 when we yeah. launched our website that we were a life Star, mm, mm. But yes, once a year we like to battle it out for the knit or forfeit crown. We Last do. year, K won. Yes. But sadly, she's lost the crown. What do you mean I've lost? Oh, literally, no, What no. do you mean I've lost the crown, she said? Meant, no, no, look, in my defence, I haven't lost the crown. I know where it is. She just can't find it right now. <laughs> it used to, the crown has always lived on the head of this massive teddy that bryony has got up on one of her shelves, right? And during the summer, we took all of the teddies off, took them outside, gave everything a shake and a dust and everything and put them back. And during that process, it has become detached. It has become detached. From the large head. From the large head. The large head of the teddy. And it's somewhere within the mountain of teddies. It has become detached. I so love. I'm going to have to pull everything off there to find yes. to find the crown. But I will do that for next time. Look, we will find the crown for the next round. But fear not, the first round happens today with a standing crown. With a substitute crown. Oh yes, we have a yes. substitute so everything is fine. It's like losing the... 
crown Super jewels. Super Bowl trophy, isn't it? What's but it called? When I win the crown next episode, yes. fear not, it will be back in its bejeweled majesty. Yes. But look, need to forfeit. That's just the start of our epicness because yes, our seasonal programming includes Nissel Forfeit, but it also includes Kay's Handmade Christmas. It does. And this year, my goodness, it's going to be an absolute stonker. I can't wait. Uh, Yeah, very different to anything I've done before. Do you know why I can't wait? Because she had a test run. And it was so nice. Yes. I was was regretting it all evening. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he was. That will become clear when you see it. Oh, it's marvellous. Yeah. I just couldn't really, stop myself. <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's very different. All of the elements of it are very different. It's nothing I've done before. Very, very festive. So, marvellous, marvellous. Yeah. And dresses all the way, baby. Yes. It's time for the elegant Kay Jones to bloom. Well... Yeah, I put on a dress, so Look, I don't know whether that qualifies. And who would like to see a little sneak peek of that dress? Because yes, I've been beating around the bush. Knit or forfeit, maybe. Kay's handmade Christmas, maybe. But what about the thing that we've become famous for? Mm. We started it in 2015, I think. Definitely 2016. I think that was the proper... Yeah, yeah. That's when it really kicked off. And we did not anticipate that we would become sort of renowned for Mm -hmm. this. People wait for it all year. People watch them all year. Mm. And, it well, it's it's wonderfully humbling and marvellous and lovely that at this time of year we seem to be the the place where people want to go and watch and and feel festive. Yes, wonderful. So how would you like to see... The teaser trailer for this year's Bakery Bears Advent Calendar. What do you think? I would love to see it. Let's do it! Bears Advent Calendar 2023. Last year, we debuted our very first themed Advent Calendar, but that was just the appetizer. Wait till you see what we've got in store this year. Join us for our Nutcracker Christmas. Every other day, you'll join me here for my festive mystery knitting. Every other day, you'll join me as we go in search of sugar plums, Christmas trees, we may even do a little bit of shopping, but above all, we're going to have lots of festive adventures in the ancient city of Durham. But if you just can't wait until December the 1st, this year, for the first time ever, join us on our website where you can find our last six Bakery Bears Advent Calendars. We've been working all year to make this our best Christmas ever. So make sure you join us from the 1st of December for the Bakery Bears Nutcracker Christmas. Brand new music, brand new graphics, dresses. 
Absolutely. New locations. Yes. And best of all, a brand new Christmas with the Bakery Bears webpage where you can find our last six advent calendars. Yeah. So if one just isn't enough for you, and I get the feeling that knitters, it doesn't tend to be enough for them. No, no, Most I... Most knitters tend to have ten knitting yeah, advent calendars. I, I, yes, yes, yes. But also, I mean, I know personally I love watching sort of vlogmases and things like that, and I watch vlogmases all year. So I know that people will love being able to go back and watch previous years. So it's fantastic they're all now in that one place. It absolutely is. What did you think, though? I mean, we love the music, don't we? We do love the music. It's been in my head because um, Dan's been editing a lot, obviously, and I'm constantly hearing it in the background, so it's stuck in my head now, which is lovely because it's so, it's just so pretty and festive and exciting and fun and all of those things. And for the know. first time ever, we've created completely bespoke graphics. Yes. Previously, we've been sort of taking things off the shelf and then making yeah. them look how we yeah. want to make them look. Yeah. This time, it's a complete thing created by us and yeah. it's all thanks to Kay's epic theme what about the theme nutcracker baby it's a nutcracker christmas i didn't realize up until Kay said oh let's do a nutcracker christmas how synonymous with christmas nutcrackers were no that's right because i think They're it's they are everywhere i would say it's more prolific probably in the states than it is here but even so the thing you, is know, though, you, you do still get them here everywhere and because the American media market is so huge, yeah. because that's global, yeah. you Ev- see them everywhere. You do, you do. And, you know, it's it's such a, a loved Christmas theme as well. You know, the, the ballet, the ballet is where I took most of my inspiration, but then also the book as well. And, uh, you know, realising, you know, when we announced the theme to our, our patrons, which we did last week was it you know it was it's it it has been hugely hugely popular and everybody's super excited and of course my advent design is also nut nutcracker themed and now it will become evident i've got it down here as to why do you remember me making this bag with the nutcracker cross stitch on now it all becomes clear because this has been the bag that's been housing the design and this has got my design book in here and leftover yarn and everything for the design so yeah it's been so fun creating the design and I can't wait to get cracking get cracking on it because it's still a mystery you know the design is a mystery so Kay will get cracking yeah. On the 2nd of December. Yes. That's when the Advent Mystery Knit Along begins. Yeah. But as she mentioned, she has already shared all the details of yes. what you need to take part. And that's actually open to anyone to go have a look at. You can and look at that on the we'll website. Put the link, yes. Well, we'll, we'll put the link to that information in the show notes below. Yeah. We mentioned it in the trailer there, but the Baker Bears Advent Calendar is available in full to silver, gold and platinum patrons. But bronze patrons will join us on the 1st and on the 24th of December. Yeah. And the most exciting thing of all is on the 24th of December, the pattern that's the pattern, in that bag. Yeah, the pattern that we will have been knitting our way through during December goes out in full to everyone on the 24th, to all of our patrons, every I should patron. say. Yes. It goes out to every patron on the 24th of December. As our Christmas gift yes. to and, all our lovely And patrons. that then becomes the first platinum pattern for 2024. This is, do you know what? I'm stunned. Why? It's the first year you've nailed it. Yeah, I know, because it's taken me six years to get my head around <laughs> what it is we do. <laughs> but you nailed it. Boom. <laughs> Yay me. So, uh, folks, I hope you can see that this year is going to be the most epic seasonal yeah. period of yeah. filming ever. And even if you're not joining us for our advent calendar, knit or forfeit, case handmade Christmas, yeah. lots of other surprises. So, you know, get ready for yeah. Yeah. a holiday season to remember. Really exciting. And we're kicking it off today with a show and a half. We've already mentioned, well, we've already seen the trails of the advent calendar, but... We've already mentioned Knit or Forfeit. Yeah. We, though, have some absolutely stupendous what's off your needles. Yes. The most amazing scarf. Yes. My goodness. In what's on your needles, what's on your needle, the most amazing bag. In the making, yes. Yes, yes, I like it. 
A pattern launch. A pattern launch today. And even more exciting, it's seasonal. It is seasonal. <laughs> I think it's high time that I said, Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Okay. Oh, so I've got some very exciting things. So do I. Today. Do you as well? I do. Well, that's marvellous, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yes, yes. So and you've got your project in your... If you want to see my exciting things, bag. make haste. <laughs> Dan's still keeping a project in yes. this massive bag that's entirely inappropriate that's for the fine. size. But, you know, you're enjoying using it, aren't you? Yes. And then you'll be getting a sweater in that next year, I'm sure. If I want to knit coasters in this bag... <laughs> Go for it, yeah. is that what I say? So, what I am knitting is, the first thing, is a pair of socks. And I've done brilliantly well. Do you know how I was bemoaning the fact that a few episodes ago I got like a million pairs of socks on the needles? Well, I've done really well. And I've got that really down. And I think now I've got... I might only have two pairs on the needles, I think, and it might be the two pairs I'm going to be showing you. I do have one other pair up there in a bag, but it's a future design for much later in the year next year, so it's sort of hibernating. But in this project bag, this is a project bag I made donkeys years ago. I loved this fabric. I can't remember the range, unfortunately. I put a pink zip on it and I use this quite often it's a really nice size for socks so yeah I've got a pair of socks in here and I've shown you these socks before but then I hadn't touched them for ages and it's my poo sticks socks so the yarn is from giddy yarns are you laughing in the background yes I just I like the way you intonated that poo sticks yes, yes. <laughs> and yeah it's her poo sticks I'll say it in a proper way colorway and I just I loved the name of this and I love the association with Winnie the Pooh Pooh Bear we tend to call him Pooh Bear more in this house than Winnie the Pooh it's the same adorable bear and I started these a while ago do I even know no I don't even know I think oh actually no I can but yeah they, they were then just sort of left and I've picked them back up and I'm on the second sock now so yeah I've finished the first one and it's the yarns are lovely lovely colorway it's got some lovely colors and yes there is a bit of poolage poolage new word going on here on the gusset because I just kept to the same yarn I didn't change yarns or anything do you know what it's all right isn't it it kind of looks a bit better on that side doesn't it let's show you this side where it's not quite so obvious I've still got an end to weave in there but it yeah I mean it, when you look at it in camera actually you can see it does do a, a, a slight well it's more than slight isn't it there is some sort of pooling thing going on sort of here and then obviously here on the gussets and then it goes this way on the foot but you know in real life you you don't see that as much the camera really picks up differences in tones and things like that but it really in, in real life it's really not as evident as that but I love the colours that are in this yarn there's sort of really pretty greens there's like a rust colour and then there's like a sort of lavenderish colour really pretty in a gold as well so I really love the colours and it was really the name of the colourway that got me because of Bryony's love of Pooh Bear and all things associated with that so yeah I finished the first sock just a plain sock so I just did 15 rounds two by two rib I did 45 rounds on the leg so it's about a sort of medium length I would say standard slip stitch heel I did a different heel turn on this just to try it out and it's much more pointy the one that I use and is in my patterns has a more of a I'll show you this one and you can see how it's quite pointy can you see that and the one I use has a bit more of a flat top a bit of a longer flat top and th this was fine. I think it's good to try things, isn't it? But I do prefer the one that I use. I think it is good to make sure, especially when I'm putting them into designs, I think it's, it is good to sort of go back and review these things and not take it for granted just because it's something I've always done that it's necessarily the best that I could 
offer. But at this stage, I do prefer mine. But only, but mainly because I always think of a heel, the shape of a heel. You know, it's it's like a dome. Mm, it's not even a dome. What what shape is that? It's a heel shape, isn't it? But the back of your heel, I don't see that as being pointy. I see it as more going like that and then a gentle curve. So I find having a bit, bit more of a flatter top to the heel turn makes a bit more sense to me. But, it you know, it's fine and it, it worked out perfectly fine. And then I've done an umbrella toe. So that's the first one done. And I've got the second one on the needles. And I'm a good way down the leg. So this one, I always wonder if it's going to knit up the same. Do you know when I've had a little break from one sock and then you go on to the next? But I think it looks pretty much the same, the way that it's knitting up. And I'm using 2.5 millimetre Knit Picks Sunstruck. I always use 2.5 millimetre double points because I knit tighter on double points, I find. It's interesting, isn't it, how I think gauges do tend to differ depending on the method that you're using. Certainly they do for me. I'm a little bit more relaxed on Magic Loop as opposed to double points. I get about nine stitches to the inch using those and this method. So I am now employing my... 10 rounds a day. It tends to be about 10 rounds a day to work through this. And I did that on the second sock. I think I was just past, or I was just on the gusset when I picked this up. So I've been doing 10 rounds a day, 10 rounds a day, and then the last day I just do the toe. And then pick this one up, I did the rib on one day, and then this is three days worth, there's 30 rounds there. It works really well for me. And what I, what I do, and what I have been doing with Dan socks is I keep a little book, a little notebook, and every time I knit him a pair of socks, I write down the details and I keep the notebook in the bag just in case I, I want to make any adjustments or make any notes about the yarn. Did I like it? Did I not like it? All those kinds of things. So I thought to myself when I was knitting these, because I just had this little scrap of paper, I've got rid of it now, but I just had this little scrap of paper in the bag with the details written down, you know, number of rounds for the rib, the leg, etc. And I thought, well, why don't I just start another little book? So I've done that. So I'm going to have the book I've already got for Dan's socks. I'm going to have one for Bryony and then one for me. And I have these little books in my book stash. You see, this is the benefit of being a bit of a notebook hoarder. <laughs> which I am, you know, I'll buy things when I see them thinking, oh, that's lovely. And then I'll just keep them. I had this book and I've got another one, which I'll show you with the next pair of socks. But this one I bought this summer, I think. I think I picked this up in Hexham in a shop called Penfax. If you're ever in Hexham in Northumberland, it's a lovely, lovely town. We really love Hexham. And there's a stationery shop in Hexham called Penfax. They've got a website if you want to go take a look. But we, we went in the first time we were there and we went in again this time. And they've got loads of different brands of notebooks and diaries and all of that, as well as pens galore and all of the things. But I really like Loistrum. I think this is a... Oh, gosh, my eyes. My eyes! Yes, it's a Loistrum. It's, in, it's imprinted on the back, isn't it? Does that say Loistrum? Yes, it does. And is, is that embossed? Yes, it's embossed, yes. but it's not embossed very well. But right. yes, I picked up this one. I think you pronounce it Loistrum. It's this, Loistrum 1917. It's a German brand. And this one is this beautiful yellow. It's hardback. And it ha you know, I really like that they have the elastic and it has a bookmark. And I picked this up and I'd never used it. So the company is called Leuchtem 1917. No, it's mm, it, it's the company that, or is the company just Leuchtem? Well, what, what's the 1917? I think that that's the, the particular range of things. I think. Right. Like my planner is not, is from the 1917 range. Maybe they were established in 1917, and so that's right why, after the Great War. Would that make sense or not? Well, it would. It would make sense, but it would have been a very tough environment well, to would, become established it? in. But I'm now. I must you look see, into why the it's 1917. Is now interested. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fascinated. So yeah, I've got this little hardback book, and I love the yellow. And Bryony really likes the colour yellow. So I'm going. I'm using this now for all of Bryony's socks. And look. 
When we were in Penfax, um, Bryony picked up some new Tombows. We love the Tombow dual brush pen. And I let us swatch the colours at the back of the book. So that's a nice little memory there. So that's sweet. So these books have like a little flap at the back for storage, which is good. And it's already got something in there. That's a previous sock that I knit that I just wanted to keep notes of. But I've got the first sock details in here. So... I just make a note here of everything connected with the pair of socks. I couldn't remember when I started these, so I looked back in my Instagram feed and I did post a photo of when I, just after I'd cast them on, which I think was something like the 7th of September or something. So I know that I will have cast these on probably right at the beginning of September. So I've made a note of that and then I will make a note of when I finish them. I like to keep a log of how long it takes me to knit socks, you know. I think it's a useful a useful thing for when you think, oh gosh, you know, I need to quickly knit a pair of socks. Let me look back and see which ones I knit quickly. You know, a particular design might have been quick or whatever. So yeah, I've got all of the notes in there. And what I really like about this book is it's a squared one. Can you see that? I really like squared notebooks. I buy these very often because if I want to do a little chart, then that's brilliant. You know, you can use it as lines for writing very easily, that's fine. So I, I do really like the squares. So that is now Bryony's sock notebook. I feel like it needs something on the front, some vinyl stickers or some funness on the front. So I will do that. And I just keep it in the project bag because it's tiny, just slips into the project bag and it's there for if I need to make sudden notes if I just something you know if, if I have something to say about the yarn or I didn't like the heel for example I did a different heel so I made a note on whether I liked it or not all of those sorts of things it's a really useful little journal so I've got tons of this yarn left absolutely loads I reckon I'll probably only use about 60 grams maybe and it's really pretty colours you know the colours in there are lovely and I'm very much enjoying them knitting through this second one did my 10 rounds first thing this morning and just it was lovely and I love working in this way and I know it's not for everyone but it just works for me I enjoy a project much more when I think right I've just got 10 rounds or whatever to do today and I really enjoy it because I know I've only got that bit to do and then I can move on and do something else. So Dan Jones, what's on your needles? Are you, are you bringing life to those balls of yarn, darling? It looks like you're Look, bringing life to them. It's my Merino Yak. This is for... Regia. The Regia Merino Yak. This is for the winter in Pemberley, Cal. Yes. Thank you. Is that what I called it? Yes. Yes. The winter in Pemberley cow that Kay designed for me. And if you recall, she also made this bag for me as well for my birthday, which was absolutely marvellous. So last time I showed you this, I'd only done a little bit of the broken rib. Is it broken rib? It is a broken rib. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. You see, I'm still clueless. A broken one by one. I'm still clueless when it comes to some of these things. It's lovely. I but love the colours. The, yeah, the colours are perfect. The yarn is perfect. Oh, it's totally slithering, I've just thought. Yeah. It's fine. Well, no, not at all. The yarn is just perfect. It, I've knitted with this many times before, mm. but it's really good for colour work and it's really it fun is. to knit with. It's quite tricky to show on the needles. Yes, because it's, it's scrunched up yeah. and you've not knit too much, but you can see the two colours together and they look lovely. Yeah. It looks very school uniform, don't you think? Definitely, yeah. And I really like that. It gives me a feeling of autumn and back to school. Yes. It's really, really fun. I really enjoyed the rib, actually, and the rib can be uh, annoying. That, well, that's I'm, I'm what I thought. I'm always a lover of rib, and actually, I, I, I didn't mind really it. It looks really nice. Yeah, it's yeah, well, lovely. it works up so well. The base is so great. It is, it you, is. You could knit most things, I think, with this base. And yeah. It would, I mean, it's so great for Two cables. Two are lovely, very festive as well. So great for cables. Brilliant for cables and texture. Yes, but yeah. then also, here it is in colour work, and... Just it's lovely. Abs absolutely lovely. I'm finding really it very nice. easy to get a really nice even gauge. Yeah, looks good. And, and what size needles are you using? 3.5? Yes. 3.5 millimetre. And it looks lovely. Yeah. So it's a nice look. It's much, this, this cowl is much in the same vein as the Sweetheart cowl. Yeah. And also the Hadrian's cowl. Yes. 
which of course takes on a whole new meaning now thanks to the tree coming down we recorded a radio show episode all about that so you can go and listen to our thoughts on that but it's just gone all quiet now hasn't it it has and i said to you this would happen i don't think the news cycles move i don't think they'll prosecute anybody because it doesn't seem to me that they've got full proof of it even though it seemed that it was that fella but what's so i don't think anything is going to happen and i think it's just absolutely shocking and just terrible what's disappointing is Disappoint, really disappointing. No, no. What, what, what's what's most disappointing is they're going to have to put stuff on the wall to protect it, aren't they? They're going to have to put cameras or something. Well, how can you do that for the whole length of the wall? You probably though? can't for the whole length, but there's key points. Key points. And it's yeah. just disappointing that we've got to that point. But the thing is, you know, they, he wasn't out to destroy the wall, was he? He was out to destroy the tree and he just happened to take out part of the wall as well as part of it. It's just so... None, none of it equals acceptable. No, it's not acceptable. <laughs> and it's not acceptable that... I mean, I don't know what's happening with it now. It's certainly not been in the news. So, and you would think if something had happened significant, you know, of, of any significance, then it would have been in the news. And yeah. this is just what happens, like Dam said, with the news cycle. You know, you can have something that's the most shocking, awful thing, and you know, but then the next day something else comes along, doesn't it? And that's the most shocking thing. It's people's attention spans. Maybe so. It you is. Know, it you, is. You know, you've got to. Bored of that now. Not clicking on that, that anymore. Now. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on I, to something I, else. I'm... And. <laughs> Anyway. Anyway, so, let's look at enjoying. the lovely yarn, which is lovely and tonal. I don't know if you can see it in the grey. There's some lovely tones in it. Thoroughly enjoy knitting this, though. It's, I, I love these these cows. It works out my colour work really well. And and well, you've just got to the colour work here. You're, doing, just you're on the fun. first row of colour work, which yes. is very exciting. So, made loads of progress nice since loads. last time I saw you, because... It, I'd only done a little bit of ribbing before, mm, so mm. properly into it now. So I can't wait good. to see it emerge and do needles. That's I know, I know. Be lovely. What else is on your needles? Right, my next project is my cross stitch. Now, do you remember I was working up a cross stitch, and it was a sweater. The little design was a sweater, and my intention was to complete the cross stitch and then make it into a project bag and it was going to be a gift for a friend for Christmas. Slight confession is that as I was as I was sewing the piece, which I have finished now, but as I was sewing it, I just got so attached to it that I just thought, you know what, I, I don't know if I can part with this. So after much sort of guilt-inducing thoughts and some discussions with our patrons who all said don't be silly if you want to keep it keep it for yourself you know your friend would understand and you know just make something else just as lovely for her I decided okay I'm going to keep this for myself because I very rarely knit things really for myself you know they go to Dan or they go to Bryony or gifts for other people or whatever yeah I just thought you know what I'm going to keep it so yes I finished the cross stitch and I've made the front panel of the bag now I decided that I was just going to make this a really big project bag because I do have a couple of large project bags but really not that many and quite often, if I'm knitting a blanket or, you know, my reading shawl, then I do need a big bag and I think it's nice to have a big bag. But also, I wanted this to be a bag that I use for Advent this year because I do have plans for knitting something through December and having a big bag, I think, would be really useful. So I'll show you the panel. It's really quite large, but I'm so pleased with it. So you can see my completed cross stitch there which just turned out so lovely. This is a design from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And I think it must, might have just been called something like Christmas Jumper or Christmas Sweater. And I changed the colours. You'll, you'll see if you go to look at that design that it's red and it's sort of like a blue. And I didn't want that. So I changed it and I made it pink and like a sort of cinnamony colour. And it just turned out so pretty. And I showed you these fabrics the last time I spoke about this cross stitch, but these fabrics that I've pieced together around it are all Liberty Quilting Cotton. They're from a few different ranges. So I've just done the front panel and this actually took me 
It took me about an hour and a half just to do this front panel. Because it's not a specific size, I was, it's not like you're just cutting out pieces of fabric and sewing them together, which I do have some wooden templates for that. But with this, what I did was I, you know, started here with this one. So I measured the size of my cross stitch. I trimmed it to size and then I measured the size of my cross stitch down here and then cut a panel. I just sort of eyeballed it and thought that's a good size and sewed that. And then I did the bottom panel. So again, I just measured this length and then just decided on the depth and did that one, sewed that one, ironed it, you know, I ironed all of the seams down after each one. And then I did this side and then the top side, just in that same process. And I just ended up with this size. And then I have ironed it onto some fusible fleece. Now on this, I, I've always used, it used to be Vileen, and I think it's now something like Visaline. And I think it's hate. Oh, do you know what? I love to use that. <laughs> When I've been running, why. I put it just on, on, well, it's on very, my heels. It's very similar to Vaseline, isn't it, the word? But why change it from something that's quite easy to say and to remember, Vileen, it's always been Vileen, to something that's quite difficult now to remember because it's spelled a bit strange. But the number, I, I think it's H640, it's a medium weight. But the last two times I've bought this, it doesn't quite seem as thick and plump as it used to be. It, it's not as substantial as it, I'm sure it used to be. And I'm wondering if that's something to do with the changeover. So I've used it for this and, you know, it'll be fine. But I think I might have to look for something that's a bit thicker. But it's just an iron-on fleece you should try pseudocrem hey i put pseudocrem on everything so stick it on the back it's of your, called, we, your we, fabric and we, sew that together we call pseudocrem magic cream in this house because you know you have a little cut or a graze or a spot or anything badly burnt my thumb bung on some pseudocrem covered it in pseudocrem yes covered it in cling film, cling film left, taped it down left it on overnight got it the next morning Loads My thumb better. was better than it was before I burnt it. <laughs> it's better. I'm telling you, pseudocreme is the answer to everything. And obviously, nappy rash. Not that, you know, I'm, I'm in that zone anymore. But, but yeah, this panel is done and I'll measure it. Shall I measure it? I've got a tape measure here. I, I haven't uh, measured it. Well, this is exciting TV. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Do you not think it'd be interesting to know how big my bag's going to be? Look at that. Oh, my word. Look at that. Yeah. I thought it's going to be some awkward size. It's exactly 19 inches across. That's amazing. What is it down? It won't work out that down. No, it doesn't. It is. It's about, it's between 13 and a half and 13 and three quarter inches down. So it's going to be a lovely size. So my next job for this is doing the back panel and I'm just deciding what I want to do because I think, you know, I could just do one piece of a different fabric. I've got some of the pink ones. I could do just do one piece. But I quite fancy, it's not patchwork, but just doing strips maybe, quite wide strips of two or three different fabrics. I might do that and piece those together. But what I did... I did have something for the lining, but when I saw how big this was going to be, I don't think the piece I've got is quite big enough. So I decided to have a look around and I found this one. I've kept it all Liberty Quilting Cotton because I just love it so much. It's so beautiful. But I found this one and I got this from Wool Warehouse. And the range is it's from the Emporium range and it's called Java Feather. And it's just a pale pink with these little sweet feathers on and I think that would be perfect for the lining the inside of the bag I got myself a really long zip <laughs> look at the length of it when I saw again how big it was I didn't have a zip big enough so luckily again Wool Warehouse had the this I like the YKK yes it is YKK zips just the closed end and this one's 22 inches, so perfect. 
And then I did also order another Liberty fabric from Wool Warehouse. It was in their clearance and it said they had three quarters of a metre left. And I was like, great, I'll have that because I loved it. But it was a a stock error. They didn't actually, they only had, I think, a fat quarter in. So it wasn't enough. So I cancelled that portion of the order, which was fine. But I did manage to find it somewhere else. I loved it so much. And the one, so it's, that's on its way from somewhere else. And I've still got it on the order. It's all Liberty again. And it's from the Cottage Garden range. And it's Little Vine in pink. And it's a really gorgeous pink. It's kind of like this pink, this background pink here. And it's got these little flowers on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So depending on if I really, really love it, like I think I'm going to, I might just do it as a single piece for the back of the bag. Or it might become part of the sort of patchwork that I do for the back. So I've got to do the back panel I've got to cut out the linings. I've got to make a handle, which I'll just do from some offcuts of, you know, the fabrics I've already used. And then I can put it together. And I want this finished by the end of this month. So this will be done for the next show. You'll see it finished on the next show. And then we can see how big it is. And when I sew it together, you won't see as much of this bottom one because the bottom gets boxed. So you might only see sort of this much of it and then it'll sort of be underneath on the bottom. I'm taking my time making the bag because A, well, the other thing is I've still got a bit of a dodgy back hip area going on from my 18th birthday dancing. It's a lot better, but I found when I was sewing this, the sort of cutting out, you know, leaning over and pressing down and then the up and down and the ironing and the sewing. It's not good for my back these days. So I'm taking my time with it, but it will be done for the next show. I've got some Equinox mitts. Kay gave them to me for Christmas last year. The pattern? Yes, no, yes. I gave it to you for your birthday. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Well, I was knitting other mitts. I t maybe I held off. Because I had other you mitts on You didn't cast go. them on straight away. Uh, I must have been. I must have finished the other mitts and then cast them on and then hibernated them when it got out of the cold season. Nah. But now they're back and I've decided that my favourite thing to do, first of all, the yarn is the yak and the two colours you can see there are just gorgeous. There's the lovely darker one and then and it's the it's the Reggio Merino yak. We ought to have shares, didn't we, in yeah, Reggio Merino yak. We just know I what saw, we like. I saw recently on Instagram, if you follow Reggio on Instagram, they put up a post that they brought out a new range of this and it's Ooh. like a gradient Oh one. yeah, I remember. Need to have a look at that. But I've decided that I really like to do increases. Ah. Oh. It's so much fun. I'm going to pop on this mitt. No, no, why don't you look at this mitt first? Oh, okay. This is the moment. I was going to sing. Where's Jane McDonald's when then. you need it? <laughs> Marvellous. Yeah, I really, really enjoy doing increases. Are they okay? Yeah. Oh, yes. Looks okay. The, are you sure? Well, yeah, it looks okay. Okay, cool. That stitch there is quite large. The last stitch. Yes, it's totally fine, darling. Totally fine. Cool. Well done. That sounded a bit facetious, didn't it? <laughs> oh, I love the colour of this yarn. Yes. Isn't so, it pretty? Two things to make a great project. Yes. Latvian braid. Yes. And also put increases. This... Put those two things together, whatever it may be that you're creating. Yes. Whether it be a blanket. Then you're going to like whether it. Whether it be a coaster. You just need some increases and a Latvian braid yeah. and you're off. Latvian braids are the business. And oh, aren't they lovely? I loved as well that find. I mean, we're so stupid, but finding out last year, it was True. last year in Knit or Forfeit that we discovered, but I think you already realised, but I, I don't know, I certainly didn't, that you can do Latvian braids going in either direction. Yes, you can. And I, I, think I, don't, that that's think, I don't think I reversed it. No, I didn't reverse it with these. I so just had you, it going one way. You just reverse the process and you get it going mm. in the opposite direction. That is so cool. It's really like pretty. <sighs> and these mitts, part of the mitts, so the cuff and the Latvian braid were inspired by my Scrooge's stocking design, which last was year. last advent. That's why I didn't cast them on. Oh, that is right, because you didn't want to show it. Whilst... I wasn't allowed to cast them on until December. Boom. 
There we go. Yeah, so they definitely were a birthday gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just held off. That's the reason why I thought yes. Christmas, because I couldn't. But it's so pretty. That cuff is so pretty, isn't it? Yeah. It produces that wave effect. And then you get the Latvian braid, and then there's like a just a snowflake sort of texture. Yeah. On the front of the mitt, so you've just got the thumb to do there. But I love this colour, it's beautiful. It, is. it was teal melier. Yeah. I don't know how to say it, but it's the Regio Merino Yak Teal. If you just look that up, I'm sure you'd find it. They are so, I forgot how much fun I look. I really like knitting fingerless mitts and mittens, I think it's really fun. It's sort of like a sock for me. The but only quicker. thing that I'm rubbish at. And it makes my head explode. Is the back? It, it, it's the backwards loop cast on. Oh, over the, over this bit. It literally makes my head explode. It's so it, all you do. Is I know, the, I know. I've watched tutorials. Just do that. Yours. Right, and you still can't I, do it. I, I don't know what, what. I did it for you. I think did I with the with that one? No. Did you do it or did you do it? I think you did it on the other mitts that I knitted. Right. And then I did it... Did you do it on these ones? I definitely did it once. And it would right. make sense if you did it twice for me and I watched. Oh, right, And then okay. I did it. I'm on a bit of a mission with... I think this might be my next thing, right? Because, do you know this bit here? Do you know when you go back and you pick up your thumb gusses and then... Your thumb stitches, sorry. And then you pick up a couple of stitches to close the gap. It's a bit like closing the gap on a sock, yeah. You know, you've got to connect those two two yeah. areas there and you have to pick up stitches in the gap. And I've done it loads of different ways in the past and I'm yet to find a method that I think is spot on. So that might be my next thing, I think, my next right. I've, I've got to come up with a solution for this, you know, to get a really neat yeah. pick up there. I um, panicked then. I thought I'd done the pattern wrong. Oh, no, I put it on the wrong hand. I am sorry. I, put, I, just, it's fine. I just put it on the wrong hand. Oh, Because I did that on my first mitts. I knitted two left ones. Oh, you did, yeah. What a complete me. fool. That's but, yes, me. Equinox mitts, Regia Merino Yak. It's lovely. Square needles. It's the Cubics. Yeah. Perfect. Two point, is it 2.75? Yeah. Yes. I yeah, 2.75s. I think. And... Great project. Yeah. Loving it. It's been really fun. I felt bad about not knitting on them, but I wanted to hibernate them until the cold season again. Well, it doesn't matter, does but it? But I did there's feel no, bad about not knitting on them. Well, there's no rules, is there? You know, it's, you're you're the boss of your own knitting. The rules are there ain't no rules. What's that for? It's Greece. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they're having the race. Where they're playing for pinks. I'm playing for pinks. Pink slips. Ownership papers. So they're not pink. Yeah, they're not pink here, are they? No, no, they're definitely It's that not long pink. since I've sold a car, I can't even remember. Look. I don't sell cars. I just keep them for 27 years, apparently. Forget about cars. <laughs> we want to see what else is on your needles. Okay. So, the last thing on my needles is another pair of socks, and it's a new pair very exciting very, very so before exciting. i show you the new pair i wanted to just show you another of these little notebooks that i've got stashed and this is the one i'm going to use for socks for me i like that jumper i know that i, I, I know that's lovely isn't it i'll show you that in a second it's on my project bag i'll show you that in a sec but yeah the the other little book that i had in my notebook stash is this one and i hadn't used this one either because i I get notebooks and then I can't bring myself to use them. Yeah. And I'll give you an example of that in Endy Bits. Because I just I just love how they look when they're all brand new and not used. Not ruined. Not ruined. By writing. I know. But I am going to use this one as well. And I can't even remember when I picked this one up. But this one is another just little notebook. And I had to really squint my eyes... <laughs> To, to find the name but it's it's stalogy that's how you say it isn't it s-t-a-l-o-g-y stalogy you'll if you're in you're in the notebook business you'll know the brand and this one's very similar to the other it's got squares although the lines are fainter but this one actually which way up does it go it's that way you can't tell the front from the back which is just a bit silly but Gosh, it's so faint. This one again is squares, but you won't be able to see. But up here, very faintly, it's got like a calendar. 
So I think you could actually use it. And then down the side, it's all also got incredibly faintly. I mean, please come on, people. It's got, yeah, this runs from 8 to 21 down here. I mean, really, it's barely visible. They need to print with darker ink, I'm sorry. But it's so pale, it's not. It's making me laugh. But anyway, I didn't buy it for that reason. But I think you could actually use it as like a, a daily planner, I suppose. I'm not going to. So again, it's squared note paper. And I like this one, but I don't love it as much as the, the Loistrum because this is just a straightforward notebook. There's no little pocket in the back. There's no bookmark. There's no elastic on the front. But it's perfectly fine. So this will be another one that I'm going to use for sock notes. But in this project bag, and this is the the jumper Dan was talking about. Can you see it here? It's a lovely festive jumper. And I've put this project into a Christmas project bag. This one is from Emma at Moo and Mouse. Because these are Dan's Christmas socks. So my plans, one of my plans for December and starting soon, actually, I will show you all three of them next time, hopefully. But is I want to I want to knit a pair of Christmas socks for for each of them, each of us, each of them, <sighs> for each of us. So this pair is the one for Dan, Dan's. I can't speak. I'm literally Ooh, sticks. I'm literally lost the ability to speak. These are Dan's pair. No! <laughs> Just carry on. You know what I'm trying to say? <sighs> um, and then with in between now and the next time that we see you, I will have cast on the other two pairs for me and for Bryony. <laughs> for me. <laughs> so this is the other little notebook, and I've had this one for ages. This is a Hobonichi notebook. I love Hobonichi as a brand. But you just don't like their notebooks. <laughs> well... <laughs> You know, I love the idea of the Hobonichi cousin. And I, I got one a couple of Christmases ago, you might remember. But it just didn't work for me as a planner. Didn't work for me for lots of reasons. You found it frustrating However, that you could see the writing on one side yeah, when you yeah. turn the page on the other. Yeah, but also the layout of it just didn't work for me as a, a work planner at all. My goodness, you did but try to make it work. I really did try. I really, really did try to make it work. But However, I love watching people plan in the Hobonichi planner, particularly Helen at Coffee Monsters Co. I love Helen and I love her channel and I love her products and I've got about a million of her washi tapes. So yeah, I love watching people plan in the Hobonichi cousin, but I, it's just not for me. However, I love them as a brand. I think, you know, anything Japanese and stationery, you can guarantee it's going to be high quality, you know, just brilliant all round. So I got this at the same time as I got the Hobonichi Cousin, which must have been two Christmases ago, maybe even more, I don't know. And I've been using it as a, a sock note-taking thing since then. Oh, look, January 2022. So it will be two years this Christmas that I got it. And I did initially just use it for, for any socks, for regardless of who they were for but then quickly it just became Dan's sock knitting journal if you like and that's what it's remained it's a little bookmark I made and I really like it it's the papers that super thin Hobonichi paper and again it's squared but lovely so this is the other one that I'm using and this new pair of socks has got its own page with all of the notes so I'll show them to you. So this is the yarn that I dyed up recently in honour of a very much loved pair of socks that was knit out of no makers, who sadly does not dye anymore. And they've just, are they completely worn out now, these ones? Yeah. Yeah. So I dyed up a colourway with that in mind. And the colourway from No Makers was called 88 miles per hour and it was a Back to the Future reference. So I sort of looked at the colours that were in that and then just dyed them up randomly. I didn't know how it was going to knit up, but I just thought, let's just haphazardly throw dye in the pot and see what happens. So this is the yarn. 
So it's a mixture of oranges and black to create that look of the sort of flames coming out of the back of the DeLorean. And I've started a pair of socks and I've just finished the heel flap. And I really love them, so here they are. And I really like how it's knitting up actually. I didn't do anything intentional, not, I, I probably subconsciously do these days because I'm just so used to dyeing in a particular way to avoid pooliness too much, you know. So I just probably do it subconsciously, but I think it's knitting up really lovely. And it, it's a bit sort of mad, isn't it, in its variegation, but I, I really like that. So I am knitting a one-by-one one broken rib. That's funny because that's what you were just knitting. So Dan really likes rib socks, but I just somehow I find it really difficult to face knitting a fully ribbed sock. Maybe I will at some point. I don't think I've done a fully ribbed sock. I'm not even sure. So I've gone for a broken one by one because I prefer knitting a one by one rib as opposed to a two by two. So we've got one by one rib for 15 rounds. I think it was 15 rounds. And then I've done 50 rounds for the leg, I believe. I can check in my book, can't I? Yes, indeed, 50 rounds for the leg. A broken one by one. So it's one round plain knit, one round knit one pearl one. And I can deal with that. And then I've just done the heel flap. And I've done, the last couple of pairs I've made for Dan, I've done a slightly longer heel flap. So instead of, so this is 72 stitches. So instead of doing 36 rows on the heel flap, I've done 40 on the past couple of pairs. And just having that extra little bit of length on the heel flap, I think is good for Dan's feet. So I've just finished the heel flap and I'm ready for the turn. And I'm using Magic Loop, as you can see, for this pair. So I've been using double points a lot lately, so I just fancied using Magic Loop. And this is the Addy Lace, I think it's called here. And I really like the Addies for Magic Loop. It's really nice. And I think they're coming out really lovely. Beautiful. So once again, I am employing my 10 rounds a day method. And I've planned this whole pair of socks the whole way forward. And I should, in theory, finish the pair round about the 18th of December. So that'll be perfect. So when I cast the other two on for me and for Bryony, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plan it in divide it and make sure that I knit that little bit every day so that they'll be finished round about that same time would be great because then I've got time to block them, wrap them up, etc. Cool. And it's, it's really lovely. Thank you so much. So, do you like them? I do. They pay homage wonderfully yeah. to that wonderful pair of socks. Really and nice. They'll fit me much nicer too. Well, this base is a bit plumper That's right. than the 7525. This is the 8515 yeah. that I really like knitting with and that I was, I've been dying on all this year. Thank you so much. So, yeah. Right. It's time for the Titanic Battle of the Titans uh, oh. to recommence. Right. <laughs> Gosh, that's a lot of words. Every year we face off in the epic duel that is knit or forfeit. We do. But who will win this year? Mm. We have absolutely no idea. And there's only one way we can find out. So let's commence the very first round of the 2023 battle that is knit or forfeit. Baby, you absolutely... Are you feeling intelligent? <laughs> to help us on our way, we have three lifelines. Oh, gosh, I have honestly no idea, so I'm going to have to take a stab. Who will win? Let's find out as we play Knit or Forfeit. Is she right? Uh, she is! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year again. Yes, Knit or Forfeit is back, baby. Now this, of course, is the quiz show for a knitter with a bit of general knowledge as well. So it's the perfect game show to play with a partner who doesn't knit because, yes, we may have five questions on knitting, but we have four on general knowledge and we have our famous speed round. We started our speed round last year and it was an absolute huge success. Not for me, because I lost, <laughs> but you guys loved it and it was really exciting. So the speed round is back. 
So what exactly is knit or forfeit? Well, we will have, over the next two episodes, one round each. We have two contestant, and the contestant gets one round to set their score. At the end of the round, they'll have set their score, and then the round after, the second contestant will set their score, and then we will know our winner. Now, along the way, we do have some help, because if we hear a question and we know the answer without the multiple choice questions, because this is very much like who wants to be a millionaire, we can answer without hearing them. And if we do that, we get two points. But if we need to hear the questions, that's no problem because we can listen to the questions. And then if we're still not sure, we also get three lifelines. There's 50-50, ask the audience and phone a friend. So that's the rules. You know how we play knit or forfeit. Now, of course, we need a contestant because yes, I'm one of the contestants, but the other contestant was last year's winner. She is the holder of the knit or forfeit crown. Yes, it's the wonderful Kay Jones. Welcome back to the show. My goodness, it seems like a whole year since the last it time does, I saw you. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> I think it just might be. Oh yes, she has returned and she is the holder of the knit or forfeit crown. Yeah. Now, the first requirement of being the holder of the knit or forfeit crown is you have to produce the crown when it's time to defend your honour. So could you produce the crown for me, please? Well, I, I can produce a crown. That's not the knit or forfeit crown. Well, we've had a little sort of crown jewels theft. We? Is that the royal we? You've lost the crown, haven't you? No, I haven't lost it. I know where it is. I just can't get to it. And we will find it for next time. Yes. So you have a standing crown. It's under a huge mountain of soft toys that I just can't get to. So, I have a replacement crown. I think... Is that acceptable? It's more than acceptable. I would give you an extra point, but I'm not going to. So here is my sparkly silver crown. Beautiful. It's a little on the large side. It sets off your ensemble perfectly. What do we think? I think it's rather fetching. Look, I will let you off because we'll find the crown for next time. It may end up round my neck at some point because it is rather large. Because, yes, this time I will win. I lost last year and it was unacceptable. We shall see. Yes, we will see. I'm not holding out much hope, to be honest. You absolutely... Are you feeling intelligent? (laughs) You destroyed me last time on the speed round. I'm not going to make the same mistake on the speed round I made last time. I did like the speed round. You see, I say that now. You did great on the speed round last time. And I picked the wrong topic and the wrong year. You did. Because what we do is, the general knowledge questions, they're actually taken from a game which I know so many of us play at this time of year, which is Trivial Pursuit. Mm. So Kay has chosen science and nature and geography as her general knowledge questions. Yeah. So question six and question eight will be a... Science and nature from questions from 2000... Oh, no, I think it's 1991. Or is it crumbs? I can't remember. Anyway, it's an early... It's, it's a while ago. Yeah, it's an old... These. If you've got one of the... Uh, original think, uh, set. Has everybody got, like, this original set of yes. Trivial Pursuit in their house? I feel like they yes. probably have. But then also we will be having two questions from the yes. 2014 Science yes. and Nature. I'm going to take this off That's now. Right. Is that OK? You've seen, Perfectly fine. You have seen the crown of, but of then glory. You've selected old... Old science and nature for your because uh, that's me. Old yes. science and nature. Old science and nature for your speed road. Yes, but that is of course question ten. Yes. So we know what the score is. We have our contestant. So if you're ready, I think it's time that we play. I am ready. Knit or forfeit. <laughs> Here we go then with question one. She was trying to take no, a sneaky I'm look. Trying not to see the question. And what's particularly exciting this year is we're back in our original setting where we broadcast mm. the very first knit or forfeit. Did we? Yes. I have no memory for this. This is things. exactly where we were sat oh, when we did cool. the very first round of knit well, or forfeit. That's exciting. Isn't I it? hope you're liking. Yes, you thought the last time you were going to see this was mm. the rise and fall of the monasteries, but no, this is dusted its swan it song. Mm. I dusted it off. Do you like for his the fancy cuffs on his shirt? I know. He's got really fancy cuffs. It's very nifty. Ooh, lovely. Yes. <laughs> Look. 
I that's enough. Look. I didn't look. That's enough preamble. Stop yes. trying to see the I'm question. I'm not seeing the question. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, Should for question pen one. And paper, then I wouldn't. In December 2020, you released a winter collection of socks. Oh, I did. Which included the patterns Snow Forest, Flurry, and Winter Solstice. Oh, I thought that was going to be the question. Winter Solstice. <laughs> Each pattern included an original story written by you. Yes, that's correct. Can you remember the name of the main character featured in each of your wonderful stories? Oh, I can remember the name of the dog, I think. Oh. I was going to go with the dog, I'm glad I didn't. First of all, these socks are so gorgeous. I've knitted one of these. You've I'm knitted sure the flurry, I think. Right, yes. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I'm having a memory of it being something to do with Charlie and Lola. Right. Or did I... was inspired by Charlie and Lola. But then it was set... the story was set in, in, in my head. It was set in sort of northern sort of Sweden or somewhere like yes. that. You know, very snowy, Santa-ish yes. type place uh, in the woods. So I think her name might have been sort of Scandinavian sounding, maybe as well. Would you like to hear the answers? Okay, give me the answers. You sure? I, I know, I can't remember off the okay. top of my head, which is terrible, isn't it? But it was, what, three... Is it, was it early 2020? 2020. Okay, wow. so here are the multiple choice answers. Okay. One of these is correct, and three of them are, of course, wrong. Okay. Is it A, Lola? Oh, you see how funny I said Charlie and Lola. Is it B, Shola? Right. Is it C, Lotta? Or is it D, Lottie? Right. So, I, do you know, I was right with the whole Charlie and Lola thing, wasn't I? Because I'm pretty sure it's Lotta, and that's Lola's best friend in the, um, in the TV show, the children's TV show. Yes, I'm going Lotta. So it's Lottie. We can't go back now. So is she correct? It's the first question. Is she getting off to a flyer with a point? Unfortunately, she is. Oh. You are correct. Yeah. I don't think I've got that wrong there. No, no, you're good, right? Lotta. Lotta. Nice. Yeah, the dog was called Stig, yes. I seem to remember. Well remembered. Because um, I got that from, do you remember Stig of the Dump? I do, Back did. in the day. Yes. Yeah. So brilliant stuff. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Okay, Come so on. we're on to question two. Okay. As of the 15th of November 2023, you've published 81 patterns on Ravelry. Okay. Using the amount of times a project has been liked with the heart emoji, which is your most popular pattern? It is one of a few, right. It's obviously... <laughs> it's one obvious, of 81. Obviously it's one of a few. Um, okay, so it's either... Bits and Bobs blanket. Yes. Jelly roll blanket, possibly. Could be crunkled socks. Oh, you're gonna have to give me. Okay. He's gonna he's gonna now list so here those are, things I've just said, isn't he? <laughs> here are Kay's multiple choice answers. Is it A, the crunkled socks? Is it B, the prairie socks? Is it C, the bits and bobs blanket? Or is it D, the jelly roll blanket? Hmm, I think that's the four I just said. Congratulations for knowing. Now, you could, of course, use one of your lifelines. You could go 50-50. You could ask the audience. You could even text a friend. No, I'm, I'm going to go with my gut. Okay. It's the first thing that I said. Okay. And now I'm going to be proved wrong. Okay. No, I'm going to go 50-50. Okay. I'm going to go 50-50. So we're going to take away two wrong answers and we're going to leave two correct answers. Okay. So if I take away two wrong answers yeah. and I leave you with the two possible correct ones, okay. you are left okay. with either yeah. B, the prairie socks, oh. or D, the jelly roll blanket. Oh, okay. I'm going to go jelly roll blanket. You sure? Yes. Locked in? Yes. Okay, there's no going back now. So the question was, of course, as of the 15th of November 2023, you've published 81 patterns on Ravelry using the amount of times a product has been liked with a heart emoji, which is your most popular pattern. Did she get it right? Yes, she did. Yay. Oh my goodness, you're off 
to a flyer. Jelly roll, no. Can you believe Thank it? Thank you, everybody. I, I wish I'd written down exactly how much it was, but it was at least 6,000. It wasn't 6,000. Was yes, it 6,000? Yes, it was. Okay, so question two is done. Thank you, everybody. We are on to question three. This is my favourite question of today's round. Oh gosh, right, it's going to be really hard then, isn't it? Or not, and or I'll look silly. like an, uh, I'll just look like an idiot. <laughs> okay. Lyocell C cell is a fibre starting to appear in lots of exciting new yarn bases. Often known simply as Lyocell, it's made from two ingredients. Wood is one. Can you tell me the other? Have you, huh. heard of, have you heard of this? I have, ah. but I obviously don't know the answer. I have heard this of This is all the rage. It's all the rage. Yes, I found lots of hits when I went on Google and search. I found lots of people getting very excited about this. Right. So is it as a substitute to nylon? Yeah, it's a more sustainable mm. source of fibre. Yes. Yes. Because nylon is obviously plastic. So wood and, will it be something like viscose or, I'm probably talking total rubbish. Yeah, give me the answers, okay. I, I don't know. Here are the possible answers to the question. Mm. Is it A, seaweed? Is it B, sea kale? Is it C, beach grass? Or is it D, sea thrift? Are you kidding me? I am not kidding. I had no idea that I you was, were going to say any of I those things. I was utterly things. astounded. I suppose it was called sea cell. You said lyos. What did you say? Well, it, it, the, it's called lyocell sea cell. Right. But it's normally listed just as lyocell. It, in you, you, you might get a yarn and it might say twenty five percent lyocell. Yes. It's actually fully titled lyocell sea cell. Right. And that gives you the clue as to what the additional. So what were the four again? Seaweed? Seaweed. Yes. Sea kale. Sea kale. Beach grass or sea thrift? Well, sea thrift is a flower, isn't it? I think that's a flower. Seaweed, obviously, is seaweed. Sea kale, I think, is a similar sort of thing to seaweed, isn't it? And sea grass. Beach grass. Beach grass. Beach grass. I mean, do we think it's grass? I mean, Oh gosh, I have honestly no idea, so I'm going to have to take a stab in the dark, aren't I? Unless you want to use... Shall we say seaweed? Because I suppose seaweed is the most obvious answer, because seaweed is used in all kinds of things, isn't it? And it is sort of slimy-ish, isn't it? It's got that sort of slimy texture. Yeah. Let's go see. Let's go seaweed. Okay, you sure? No. But we'll go see. We're locking in. Yes. There's no going back now. Mm. Is she right? Yes, she is. Oh, come on, seaweed. Can you believe it? No. And here is actually a picture. Oh, is there a picture? There is indeed. There's a picture of some yarn. Wow. I know. That's so cool, isn't it? And they've got lots of different colours too. Right. And, and that brand, actually, they had loads and loads available. Really and interesting. I know, I know. And seriously, I've got so many hits. You know, it clearly is something that a lot of people are like mm. really getting into. And mm. supposedly the seaweed normally comes from Iceland. Another correct question. You are, after three questions, on three points. Come on. So an excellent start. Okay, we're on to question four. Which actor who famously portrayed one of the captains of the Enterprise in the TV show Star Trek was taught to knit by his mother and has continued to do so throughout his life? I kind of want to think that's Patrick Stewart. Who else could it be? So you didn't specify which which Star Trek, I did, did not. you? So right, that's very oh. helpful. So it's not. I, I can't imagine. I mean, William Shatner. Have I ever seen any references to William Shatner knitting? I don't know that I have. I don't know why I can. I can just imagine Patrick Stewart knitting. Can you imagine Patrick Stewart knitting? Who else has been captain? Um, it's not going to be Pike, is it? No, I mean, he's not a big enough captain. And then, I suppose then we have to go into the Enterprise, so that's Jonathan, what's his name, isn't it? I can't remember his surname, it was terrible. Jonathan Archer was Thank you, Jonathan the Archer. I don't think it's going to be Jonathan Archer. I don't know, give me the answer. I'm, I, I... So you'd like to hear the answers? You'd like to hear the multiple choice answers? Yes. Okay, here we go with the answers. 
So the possible answers are uh -huh. A, Sir Patrick Stewart, <laughs> B, Scott Bakula, C, William Shatner, oh. or D, Anson Mount. Right, so I mentioned three of those. You mentioned I four just... of those. Oh, so I did, I just didn't say what Pike's real name was. No, that's why I said, are you sure you want the answers? <laughs> He's very, very nice. Okay. Sorry. Look. Anson Mount. Should I go again with my gut? I can't imagine Anson Mount knitting. I just can't envisage that in my head. I don't think it's going to be Scott Bakula, Bakula, however you say it. It's got to be Patrick Stewart, hasn't it? I can totally see Patrick Stewart sat knitting of an evening, can't you? Patrick. Sure. Sir, sorry, Sir Patrick. You want me to look at him? It's not gonna, I can, his eyes are telling me something. I'm not trying to tell you anything. No, it's pa I'm gonna go Patrick. Okay, so I'm, it's locked in. Yes, yes. There is no going back now. I did all I could. So it's not Patrick. Is she right? Yes, she is! Oh. And here is a picture of him. Oh, fabulous. Knitting in his Christmas pyjamas. Oh, how fabulous. I know. I love him. I mean, talk about an absolute legend. Yes, an absolute legend. He was a great captain of yes. the Enterprise. Yes. I'm I just mean, trying to think if he was my favourite captain. I'm not sure if he was my favourite captain. No, you, we know your favourite's Anson Mayon. Well, he's a very recent captain. I, I don't know that he would be my favourite, to right. be honest. Okay. Very cool. So you're doing extremely well. Four questions. I would like to sit and knit with Patrick. And four points. It's time for a picture question. Ooh. In 1985, this actor appeared in a knitting pattern book. Famous for his catchphrase, I'm free. Can you tell me his name? I think I know this one. Oh, I love him. <laughs> look at his jumper. I mean, look at this. It's just exceptional, isn't that, it? Is that a hand-knitted jumper? This is from a pattern book from wow. 1985. I'll tell you what, that's some amazing intarsia book, going on there, isn't this it? This pattern book featured jumpers worn by Matthew Kelly yes. and many other C-list celebrities. <laughs> but can you know, this definitely but is I've the biggest no, I, I wouldn't. It would, who would tackle that as an intarsia pattern? I, I wouldn't. I'd I'd do it as colour work. It is colour work, intarsia. It's, it's where you have to have separate little balls of yarn everywhere um, and... Um, that it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for it. So you think you know the name of the actor? I do indeed think okay. I know the well, name. You're of the always actor. saying that you've got brain fog and. Well, I, I do, but then I think I think this actor certain comes, things. Yeah, this actor comes from such an iconic TV program from my youth okay. that you know. So you do not need to hear the answer. I do not. You want to go for it? I do. Okay. That person is John Inman. Okay. So, the question is simple. Is, is the he, person is that you're John looking Inman? at John Inman? And to find out, you're going to have to come back in part oh, two. It. What an amazing start that Kay has had. She's answered all four questions right. She's gone for it on question five. If she gets this right, it's two points. Amazing. To find out, though, you must come back in part two for the exciting conclusion of the first round of Knit or Forfeit. What a start. Everything right so far. You even remembered Lotta's name. I know, amazing. And who would have thought? Seaweed yarn. Seaweed yarn. A lot of you probably were aware of that. I wasn't. That is so funny. Were you aware of that? Well, I, I bet it's wasn't. really. So I imagine it to be really soft, and somehow I imagine it to be a bit drapey as well. I don't know why. Yeah. And cool. Cool. Do yeah. you think it would be cool? Yeah, because seaweed's always cool to, to the touch. Is it? Yes. I don't know if I've ever touched seaweed. I wouldn't. It's, it's quite slimy. Gross me out. But, yes. Um, I know it's got fabulous properties, seaweed, yes. in terms of, like, your skin and things. Yeah, good stuff. Mm. So, yeah, how's it going to end? Is she right? Is John, John Inman the man who said, I'm free? Is he? <laughs> I wonder. Mm. We'll find out later on in the show what a jumper he was wearing. Right now, it cool, it's very exciting it? because the moment has come mm. for a pattern launch. A pattern launch. It's this is time. A, this is very exciting. For the Winterfest socks to the, appear. The Winterfest socks. Yes, now you will recognise or you might recognise these socks because these are the ones that I've been knitting recently. 
that were inspired by my fairground socks. So I spoke at length about these the last time I showed them, but they have the elements of the fairground socks in terms of the movement that you get within the pattern. But I designed them because I wanted to have that same feel of the fairground socks, but to be able to use a tonal yarn and to see the movement. So because you can knit the fairground socks in a tonal yarn, of course you can, but you don't necessarily see the movement like you do with the self-striping because it was designed for a self-striping. But by changing it in the way that I have, you can now see the movement in the sock. And I think it's just turned out so beautifully. So I knit these using Malabrigo Ultimate Sock. This is what I've got left. And it per oh my gosh. Perfect. My jumper's exactly the <laughs> same colour. Look. So this jumper is Ravelry Red. Amazing. <laughs> I didn't knit it. This is, I bought this from, I don't know, Next, I think. But yeah, I've got this amount left, which is probably maybe 25 grams, 30 grams maybe, something like that. So that will go into my leftovers. And yeah, they're finished and the pattern is now available. Amazing. So it's on Ravelry and Lovecrafts if you would like to go ahead and purchase it. And A perfect festive knit. It is, you know, and the name comes from... Because when I was knitting the socks, the, the sort of movement in it, the undulations, reminded me of, mount, of a mountain range. And that then made me think, and the, at the time, you know, and now, we've been watching Hallmark movies. And very often you will see mountains in the background because, I don't know if you know this about Hallmark movies, but they're very often filmed in Canada. So regardless of whatever town in America is supposed to be, some made-up town... Santa Claus Ville or whatever ridiculousness they've come up with. Quite often they're filmed in British Columbia in Canada, so you do see a lot of mountains in the background. And there's always a fest of some sort going yeah. on in yeah. the town, you know. So the winter fest was just perfect. I was like, yes, that's what these have got to be. And the red colour, of course, is very festive as well. Yes. And this yarn's lovely. Yeah. I really like this yarn. It knits up so prettily and it's nice and soft. It's nice and round. I really enjoyed working with it. And my test knitter used a skein of this as well in the, I think it was the Valentina colourway, a really pretty sort of um, lavenderish, pinkish, lilacish colour. Just so pretty and they just look so lovely. Gorgeous. She knit them up. So if you would like your own Winterfest socks, then you can go ahead and purchase these now, like I said, on Ravelry or Love Crafts. My so goodness. So that's very exciting. A nice little... What a start. Nice little sock design just before the festive season. And now there's two more. What's so, off your needles? Two other things that I finished. So I finished Bryony's scarf. Where? Do you know the one I was knitting last time that I'd almost finished? And she's been wearing this every day since I finished it. I had to drag it out of her hands this morning and give her a different one. <laughs> she's been wearing it for school. But yeah, this is the scarf that I've knitted using the Beehive Yarns Wednesday sort of Halloween advent calendar. You've got 13 20 gram minis and I open them every day running up to Halloween. And I knit that section every day. And I just used a contrast stripe just to separate them off and to give me the right length that I needed as well for a scarf. And it's just worked out perfectly. I used the same colour that I used for my contrast for the fringe. And I just love how the fringe came out. Yeah. And it ties it all in. I think having these contrast bands what it does is it shows off each of the colours in their own right, which I think is just lovely to see that separation. And I know that Beth posted recently that I think this was so popular. I think she'd put up a pre-order for dyeing some more. So if you really like it, go and have a look in Beth's shop. I don't know if they're still there. I love this, how it starts dark down here and then just runs through, it sort of runs through blues into sort of more purples and then ends with a really deep purple. 
I absolutely loved knitting this so much so that I'm trying to modify it for an advent knit I'm just working on something at the moment to see if I can modify it and get all the same feels but use an advent calendar so I'll keep you posted on on that and whether I'm going to be able to do that through December but yeah Bryony loves this she's been wearing it every day and I held the yarn double so I was only knitting 10 grams a day and I found that really manageable and just perfect is there anything for me is there anything for you? So I've got one other finished thing. Again, employing my 10 rows a day system, I finished Dan's socks. Woohoo! Look! <laughs> oh, they're lovely. Aren't they lovely? So yes. these are Dan's opal socks that I've knit for him. And I've got this much left over, so I do have a bit left over. It's opal graffiti. It's an old range. And the colour number is five. 220. I think these socks look lovely. Yeah. I, they look really sort of like hard wearing. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. That's what and we want. The colourway just knit up so lovely, didn't it? I mean, it's not just me, is it? They no, do no, feel. I, they should be brilliant. Yes. You know, they're very hard wearing. We looked through my sock drawer on our last patron only we show. We did. And the opal ones did seem to, to last have lasted long. well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the, because I've also spoken about how I feel about opal yarn more recently, and I do still prefer the older yarn. I sometimes somehow feel like the base is maybe a little bit different. It might all be in my head. But anyway, this is one of their older ranges. I think it was from 2012. But I did do a bit of a Google the last time I showed these, and I did find it in a few shops still, the graffiti range. So if you just Google opal yarn graffiti and have a look around, you might find a skein of it somewhere. But it's just lovely, and I love how it knit up. Very autumnal, perfect pair of socks for this time of year. And you can have those. Thank you so much. Ta-da! So not only do I get these gorgeous socks, we all also get to find out oh. if Kay was right in her answer to the question. So without further ado, yes. let's return for the exciting conclusion of the first round of Knit or Forfeit. Welcome back everyone to Knit or Forfeit. The tension has been palpable here. Has. She's been nagging me the whole time asking me, is she right? Is that John Ingman? <laughs> She is, of course, correct! Oh my goodness, that's two points! I can't believe it! Yes, of course, the iconic TV show is, of course... Are you being served? Are you being served? Mrs Humphrey? No. No, Mrs Slocum. He's Mr Humphreys. Mr Humphreys, yes. yes. Sorry. What were the other answers? Okay, so your multiple choice was either John Humphreys... <laughs> Do you see what I've done there? <laughs> the newsreader, no. yeah. John Inman. Mr. Humphreys. Oh, John Humphreys. Oh, right. John O'Connor. John O'Connor? Yes, yeah, son of Tom. Or, my favourite of all the multiple choice answers, Mickey John. <laughs> Do any of you out there know who Mickey John is <laughs> and understand that reference? You would have had to have had children yes. probably about 10 years ago, yes. like we did. Yes. We've got children now, but you know what I mean, young children. Yes. Um, Mickey John is a character from Balamore. <laughs> Whenever. No, no! Me too. No, no, I take it all back. So I realised my mistake then. See, that is brain fog. Yes, yes. Me too. Yes. He was a character in Me Too. Yes. Mickey John John, everybody yes. called him. He was a teacher and he used to wear the most dreadful outfit of anybody ever. He did. It was but shocking. Brilliant programme. Okay, so we finished the knitting questions. We're on to right. the general knowledge. Hey, I got them all right. You did. Come on. And a two pointer, one without hearing the answer. So, question six, six. actually, this is a geography question Ooh. and it's from 2014. Oh dear. And it goes like this. If you get on the Orient Express in Istanbul and you travel to the end of the line, where would you get off? Now, this is a particularly poignant question for Kay because she loves the Orient Express. I do. Primarily because of murder on the Orient Express. Yes. We've never been on the Orient Express. I have not, no. I would, I mean, I would love, I say I, I would love, would. I say I, I would love to go room. on. Yes, but 
The thing with the Orient Express, if you've never looked into this, and I have, is that, it, you know, the, obviously the, ca the cabins, do they call them cabins? Rooms are tiny. And they do have this, like, um, cupboard that opens up and it's got a sink in it. It's your bathroom. That's your bathroom. They, they only have toilets. There's no showers. They only have toilets, like, at the end of the corridors. So you have to go without a shower, presumably, for the time you're on there. They're usually not very long journeys, but no. even so, you have to have a bit of a flannel wash, yes, presumably. Yes. We Look, too much detail. Too much detail. Do you think you know the answer? <laughs> remember the question <laughs> what was the question if you get on the orient <laughs> express in istanbul and you travel to the end of the line where would you get right. on i'm too busy thinking about the possibilities <laughs> of a flannel wash on a train <laughs> oh right okay i do not know so we'll have to go with multiple choice okay here we go here are your multiple choice answers yeah. is it a montreal is it b london is it C, Paris, or is it D, Nice? Well, it's certainly not Canada, is it? Montreal's in Canada, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it was not going to be Canada. Uh, and it's not going to... Well, I mean, Istanbul to London. I'm not sure it's London. <laughs> what? I might have accidentally typed the wrong city in on A. <laughs> I did, I did not mean to put Montreal. What did you mean to put? Marseille. <laughs> but look, whether it's Marseille or Montreal, if you get my gist, you've not got a problem. Okay, that's really funny. That's really funny. <laughs> did you think, what's she on about Canada? I'm like, I'm like I, didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say Montreal. I thought I said Marseille. Oh, that's so funny. Right, okay. So I, I think I would either go Paris or Nice. Okay. I'm going to go Paris. Paris seems more of more of a destination, doesn't it? That okay. the Orient Express would go via. Okay. Paris, Istanbul, Paris. Now, I, I, I can, I can go. So we're locking it in. Yes, let's go with that. Okay, brilliant. Kay thinks the answer is Paris. Is she correct? <gasps> yes, she is. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, you're on a roll. Wow. Well this done. Is, this is just luck. It's excellent. It's excellent. But I'm glad I didn't know it was Montreal. Yes, yes. I'm going from Montreal. It's definitely <laughs> Canada. How are you going to get there? Okay, so. Especially without a shower. You have no chance yeah. of you. Oh dear, no. <laughs> okay, so we are on to question seven, and this is a green question from 2014. Okay. So these questions are selected at random. Right. So this is not chosen. We don't choose these questions. No, no. So it's as they come out of the pack. It's a random question generator. Yes. So the question is, what insect spreads royal jelly over eggs? I know what the insect is. So you just need to go for it then. I, I, wouldn't, I was wondering if you wanted me to tell you the particular job that, you know, job title that that insect has within the... Funnily enough, that wasn't on the card. Oh, right, okay. Okay, well, I, I think I know that. Do feel free, though, to give us more information. Well, I know that royal jelly is produced in a hive with bees. But I know in a, I know in a beehive they all have different jobs, don't they? So there's, like, nurse bees and worker bees and all of this. I'm going to go bee. Okay. But I haven't given the multiple-choice answers yet. Oh, do I have to have the multiple-choice No, you answers? said that I'm going to go bee. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so... You are saying B. Yes, bees. Uh, bees. Bees, okay. Not answer B. No, no. We're going, yes. So I'm going to give you your multiple bees. choice answers, but you've locked in B. Yes. Okay, so your possible answers could have been A, bees, B, wasps, mm -hmm. C, spiders, or D, ants. And the answer is, of course, Bees! Oh my goodness, but you went for that without hearing the answers. I did. So you've gone for that on two so far. The reason I, I knew the answer is because I read, when I was looking at menopause stuff, I read that royal jelly is, is apparently something that's used as a, what's the word? Reduces symptoms right. of, of the menopause. I mean, right. I've never tried it. And I've no idea how you would go about doing that. Right. And obviously I'm not recommending it at all. No. 
But I just read that, you know, when I was looking into menopause stuff one time. So that's where I sort of stored that bit of info. So we've had the questions from 2014. Okay. We're now moving on to the questions from 1991. Oh yes, excellent. So number eight is a geography question from 1991. Okay. And the question is this, what kind of pasta has a name that means little worms? Don't know, you'll have to give me the answer. No problem. Okay, so the possible multiple choice answers are this. A, penne. Mm. B, farfalle. C, fusilli. D, vermicelli. I don't think it's penne. Penne is the one that's like tubes and sort of cut on an angle, yeah. isn't it? I don't think it's penne because they don't really look like worms, do they? There's big fat worms. And unless they're big fat short worms. Yeah, yeah. Fusilli, no, that's the spirally one. Again, I wouldn't say that's particularly worm like. What was that one, the one after Penny? Fafale. I'm not sure which one that is, Fafale. I have heard of it, but I'm not sure what the shape is. But vermicelli, vermicelli is the really thin. It's really thin, isn't it? Don't they use it in desserts sometimes? Yeah, they do. Like... And I'll tell you something else. They also serve it for breakfast on cruises down the Nile. That's weird, isn't it? But if, I guess if you had a big pile of that, I think it would look a bit grossly worm-like, wouldn't it? So, I'll go verm vermicelli. Okay, so we're locking it in. Yes. Okay. Kay heard the multiple choice answers and she's chosen D as her answer, which is vermicelli. Is she right? <gasps> yes, she is! Ah! Oh my goodness, it's another one right. You've got every question right so far. A two for two. Which is amazing, because I don't feel like I've got any brain cells. These Exceptional. Days. Okay, so question nine. It's okay. green from 1991. Okay, okay. What element makes up 89% of water's weight? Well, water is H2O, isn't it? I was always rubbish. So that's, Things like this when that's I was in school. one hydrogen particle and two oxygen particles. Is that right? So you would think, going by that, that it's going to be oxygen. Oh, I don't. I, I really don't know. But how can there be more than two answers? How can there be more than two answers to this? What do you mean? It's multiple choices. Isn't well, it? yeah. How could there be more than two answers to anything? What element makes up 89% of water's weight? But if there's only two elements in water, how can there be more than two possible answers? That's a stupid question. Okay. You could say the same about anything. If, if, the, if the Orient Express only goes to one destination, how can oh, there be right. more than okay. one answer? Okay, I don't know why I was thinking no. that way. Give me, okay. give me okay. the answers. No, no. Give no. me the answers. No, no, if that's your theory, then go for it without hearing the answers. Well, I, no. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't have the answers. Here we go then. Here are the possible answers. Is it A, oxygen? Is it B, hydrogen? Is it C, carbon dioxide? Or is it D, iron? What's going through your brain? Well, you do get other elements in water, don't you? Depending on where it comes from and what um, rocks it runs over, for example because the minerals leach into the water. But I can't see how how that would be... That would be different, wouldn't it, everywhere? That's different everywhere, because yeah. every mineral water is different. Yeah. You know, every app is going to be different And the question is to... mineral water. The no, it's not, it's normal water. water. Okay, let's just say oxygen. Okay. It's one hydrogen, two oxygen, isn't it? Or is it two hydrogen and one oxygen? No, H, two O. Or is it H, two O? <laughs> oh. Okay. Oxygen. Sure. No. Am I locking it in? Oxygen, yes. Okay, it's locked in. There is no going back now. Is she right? Uh, she is! Oh. <laughs> Another one is correct. I don't know if I ever got the whole right at this point. I can't I don't remember. think I have. No, I don't think you have either. In fact, I'd, I'd go as far as I to should say, go and put money on the lottery, shouldn't I? I'm certain that that's not the case at all. Okay, so what an amazing start to the round that Kay has had. We've now reached the most exciting moment because yes, it's time for the speed round. And this is important. So it's green, yes, 
Yes, green is... Green. Okay. And these are old questions. So these are old questions. So this is really important because there's two minutes to ask questions and the amount of passes that you have could be the right. result okay. in you losing. Because if you pass too many times and I pass less times than you, then... Got it. Yes. Well... It's, like on mastermind. It's not just passes as well. It's if you get a question wrong, both count against that. Right. So, you know... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. So you don't want to get one wrong, ideally, and also, ideally, you don't want to pass. Well, obviously. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but if you don't know, I would just pass. Okay. Okay. Oh, crumbs, I've got to read these first. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. What would you ask a man to stick out if you wanted to have a good look at his septum? Tom. Correct. What do dendro dendrologists study? Trees, wood. Correct. What would you be doing at Wimbledon if you had a Cambridge rival in your mouth? Umpire. <laughs> You'd be eating <laughs> strawberries. What kind of television set would a chromophobe prefer? Uh, black and white. Correct. What country is home to the largest number of bald eagles, the USA's national symbol? What country? Yes. Canada. Correct. What do bruxomaniacs grind together? Teeth. Correct. Which is bigger, a gene or a chromosome? Gene. Oh, incorrect. <sighs> what compound makes carrots orange? Carotene. Correct. With what natural substance are violin bows strung? Um, sinew. <laughs> Don't know. Horsehead. <laughs> Which rodent follows on from the Chinese year of the pig? Rat. Correct. Which explorer introduced the pig to the North American continent? Pass. Christopher Columbus was the answer. Oh. On which tree do elderberries grow? An elder. Correct. Which continent is the natural habitat of the popular spider plant? Asia. Africa. What number was given to Boeing's first commercial jet airliner? 737. 707. Oh. For her work with which vegetable did Barbara McClintock win a 1983 Nobel Prize? <laughs> Sadly not. <laughs> it was corn. I'd like it to have been a parsnip. But that was a great... Well, it is sort of close to Christmas time. And what an amazing effort that was. How many correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my goodness. What a score. That is 19 points. That's bonkers, isn't That could it? quite possibly be the highest score we've ever had on knit or forfeit in one round. What an amazing start to the competition. Wow. I'm going to be hitting the books between now and next episode. Well, it depends what questions I come up with, doesn't it? That's, that's what I mean, I'm going to be hitting the books. Right. I'm going to be doing my studying to make sure that I can keep up. What a great start to the competition. Back in our original setting, in our wonderful knit or forfeit set. It's been absolutely wonderful to spend this time with you. I hope yes. you've played along. Did you and get them all right? Yes. How did you score? Did you go for any that came didn't go for I think you could have probably gone for that Star Trek one I think you were being very kind I could have gone for that one couldn't I but then you did take two absolutely and absolutely nail it so yeah, I well, should have I mean, been on 20 not 19 oh stop I? it stop it what an amazing start so we will be back next time when we will do my round of Knit or Forfeit and we will see if I have got the skills to wrestle the amazing crown from the grasp when we find it of Kay Jones. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time Thanks for more everybody. Knit or Forfeit. What a start! Oh my goodness! You used a healthy dose of logic in that round. I did. And that I need to remember Good that. luck. Well, logic and good luck, but definite logic. There was a lot of sort of logical thought. I was mm. particularly impressed with the logic that you used when you deduced that it was impossible to travel from Istanbul to Montreal on the train. <laughs> How funny is that? I was like, Montreal? Look, it sounds a bit French. I thought I was typing Marseille. 
or Monaco. I mean, my, I think it might be oh, Monaco. Monaco. I think Monaco is what I was thinking, right? Oh, yeah. Is Monaco, Montreal right? in the French Canadian area? Yes. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what That's on the right, go. isn't it? And Vancouver's on the left. Yes. Yes. Look, you see, look at my Canadian geography. Yeah, Vancouver's, way, o- Vancouver's way over, isn't it? On, on the, the left. North, e- on the west. Never eat shredded wheat on oh, the brilliant, west. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. On the west. If she gets lost in the woods, we're done for. <laughs> I, would, I would be. I don't know which way north is. So what a start. Amazing first round from Kay. The winner, though, will be decided and the crown will be found next time when it's time for me to answer questions. Yes. And I won't make the mistake I did last time with the speed round. I picked the old... Oh, you did? What did you do last time? Oh, well, I'm going to check. You messed it, it up. It was big old story. something... It might have been the old, or maybe, oh, I can't remember what I did, but no, I remember afterwards thinking... Try. That was a mistake. That was a big mistake. But you know, I chose old green, didn't I? Yeah, I'm, I'm 99% certain that I'm going old entertainment. Yeah, I think entertainment. Did it, What would it have been that you chose then last History. Time? Oh, history. I think it was all like book history or something, it? Was was it was weird. It was just elements of history odd. I just didn't know. Yeah, yeah, it was odd That's history. That's all to yeah. come. Yeah. In the next exciting episode, yes. it's immediate. It's immediate. There's no gap. Because then we're straight next into time. Kay's Handmade Christmas. Yes. Right now, though, it's time for the Endy Bits. Endy Bits. Marvellous. So Kay's got lots of lovely things to show you. I've got a few things to show you, yeah, that I've um, purchased over the last little while, actually. I've had these sort of stacking up to show you. So I've got a few skeins of yarn, and then I'll start off over here, because this is not something I've bought, but I pulled out a couple of project bags that I'm going to use for my Christmas socks that I spoke about. So I've got this one, which I made years ago. So I'm going to be using that for one of my pairs. And then this one is from Eldenwood Crafts. And I don't think it's necessarily... Oh! <laughs> nearly dropped it I don't think it's necessarily Christmassy but it just makes me think of Christmas and I love this bag so that's my two project bags for my new socks that I'm going to be casting on so the first thing I've got to show you though is I spoke about how I hoard notebooks and I do eventually use them but I bought this one recently and I've not been able to use it yet and this was in, this in, a purchase inspired by Miranda, Miranda Mills. She has a bookish podcast. A lot of you probably know her. She was new to me. I, it just popped up on my YouTube feed one day and I thought, oh, she looks lovely. I'll, I'll have a look at that. And she is lovely. And her mum is equally as lovely. And they talk about books and they visit places and they bake some things and they sit and have conversations and they are the loveliest, loveliest as people so I would highly recommend her YouTube channel if you are if you like books I like books but I mean I'm not book obsessed but I just really enjoy her channel and listen and hearing about books I've never heard of in my life which is brilliant but then also the other the other content that she provides but she speaks quite often about writing in a commonplace book now I had no idea what a commonplace book was so I went researching and found out that oh you know I might quite like a commonplace book and it's it's a journal but you put into it the idea is that you put in there inspirational sort of quotes and passages maybe from books or recipes or poems all things that you find interesting and inspirational as you just move through your daily life it's not something you have to do every day or every week or every month it's just as and when and I liked that idea and she had one from this company which was just beautiful I thought I'm gonna look at that and the company is called starsmeadbookbinding.co.uk and they are hand bound so this is the one that I chose you can see down the edge here it says commonplace book and this is the one I chose because I loved the cover I think this is a Kath Kidston design and I loved the blue and it's just a plain book you can get it lined but I just wanted it plain because I might um, doodle and things like that in it and it's the paper's gorgeous it's a lovely creamy sort of slightly yellowish colour it's lovely and thick and smooth 
and it's just so pretty I've not been able to use it yet but I will at some point and it's just a beautiful thing to have and I think with Christmas coming up it would make a lovely gift as well if there are people that you know that might enjoy that so I wanted to mention it and then I've bought a few yarns so I got this little set of minis from Pixie Yarn. You know how much I love Pixie Yarn, Sophie. And I saw these, I thought I'm gonna have those. Oh, it's um, Autumn Faves is the set. And I bought these because I'm currently trying to collect Sophie's minis in the hope that I might be able to make up an advent calendar. She's not doing one this year. So I thought I'll buy a few sets of minis and just see if I can make one myself. Whether I'll get enough to do that, I don't know. I did just order the winter faves, so they're on their way. So that'll be 10 that I've got. So we'll see whether I get enough. But I just thought those colours were just lovely. And then this is a skein from Sherry Iris. I haven't bought any yarn from Sherry in quite some time. And I saw that she was doing this particular book inspired yarn and I've had this now for a few weeks so I'm safe to show it I think it was a mystery but this one it was inspired by Winnie the Pooh <sighs> got to have that haven't I going on about Winnie the Pooh so this arrived a couple of weeks ago I think now and I ordered it you get a main skein this is Pooh Bear look we've got his red jumper and then Pooh Bear body sort of colour and then you get three or I got it with three minis so we have Piglet, we have Eeyore and we have Christopher Robin and I just thought that was lovely so I'll be knitting mm, probably socks but maybe a cowl and it comes with a lovely little and I haven't been able to bring myself to use this either a lovely postcard and there was a gorgeous note with all of the story of you know the background of it as well so that's very lovely and then my final thing when because I was knitting the poo sticks yarn from Giddy Yarns and really enjoying it I ordered her it was a mystery skein it was a hallow I think it was like a Halloweeny thing and it was inspired by the book Frankenstein and it was a mystery and I thought oh yeah that'll be really Halloweeny and Bryony loves Frankenstein so I'll order that and it came and the yarn's lovely however I don't look at this and think Frankenstein because what she's done is her inspiration for this colourway is taken from the author and a place where the author used to go on holiday. So the colourway is called The Blank and Dreary Northern Shores of the Tay. And this is the yarn. Now, it's lovely, but I'll be honest, I was kind of disappointed because it, to me, if it was inspired by the book Frankenstein, it should have been, because that's what it said it was, then I was expecting it to be inspired by the book that's rather inspired than by the author it's inspired by the author and it's inspired it by been sold as. a place that the author used to visit so it's actually nothing to do with frankenstein it's too loose and it it's not to me it's not halloween in color either it's very quite summery i think with the blues it's very pretty if you said to me that was a frozen inspired yeah colorway, absolutely i would believe you. absolutely so you know, I, I think it's important... Okay, I, just I, let, let it go. <laughs> Very good. I just think it's important that I give you honest feedback on, on everything I've purchased, whether that's good or whether it's a little bit disappointing in this case. Not disappointing in terms of the colourway. I think it's pretty, and I'm sure at some point I will use it. But for me... A lot of the enjoyment of working with the yarn is, like I said, with her poo sticks yarn, it's the story behind it and the thought behind it. And you know, it's all of that. Whereas this, to me, I, I don't understand why, why you would do this. If you were selling something, advertising something as a mystery skein inspired by the book Frankenstein... I'm expecting to receive a skein inspired by the book Frankenstein and not inspired by the River Tay. So anyway, it's pretty and it'll go into my stash and I'm sure I'll use it at some point. Cool. The radio show is back next week yes. with a show all about Hallmark and we've been studying hard 
yes, prior to the recording of the show. We'll be talking about our guilty pleasure, talking about all our favourite Hallmark movies. All our favourite hunks of Hallmark. Why we love why we love Hallmark so yeah. much, yeah. why we enjoy it and, and why it's sort of a fun thing to mm. watch and mm. you know, all year really, because you have yeah. been watching them all year and I love yeah. I yeah. love a Hallmark. I get hooked in seconds. I watch them all year round, but yes. we particularly love autumn and festive ones. And as we wait for the advent calendar to arrive, there's loads going on this month. We've already had an iCord tutorial special just went out this oh. week. We've got a festive cross-stitch review coming from Kay. Yeah. We've also got more of my one-man show, The Self-Contained Knitter. <laughs> and then on the 26th of November, our yeah. final patron-exclusive show of the year and our advent calendar pre-show party, which you can watch live from 2pm Greenwich Mean Time, or you can watch the recording anytime you like from 10 past 3. And we'll see you in two weeks with our next two video weeks. show, which will feature the exciting conclusion, and we'll find out the winner of this year's oh, knit yes. or forfeit battle. Yes. So thank you. So, oh, and also, we'll have a very special treat in store for everybody Ooh. in the next show. So don't miss it. Wow! Can say nothing more than that. That's Something exciting. like I don't woohoo! Know what it is. It's going to be very exciting. So we'll see you in two weeks with more. See you soon, everybody. Bye. Bye. Shuffle!